Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and I'm excited to unveil my video card rankings for 2021. Now, this is a project I've been working on for years, but this is the first time I unveil it here on YouTube. And I thought I'd do it now because Computex 2021 has just ended, and there were a couple new video card introductions there, the RTX 3080 Ti and 3070 Ti from NVIDIA. I figure those are probably going to be the last major introductions of the year, so this would be a good time to unveil the rankings for 2021. Now, to be clear, I'm not going to be talking about what every other YouTuber is talking about, cryptocurrency mining, product shortages, scalping on eBay, because frankly, that's been done to death and it's not very interesting. Instead, I'm gonna be taking you on a walk down memory lane to show you how every video card released since 2007's 8800 GT compares in terms of performance. I'm also gonna plot over 100 cards on a price performance curve to show you how value has changed over time because it's not enough to say performance has increased. Of course it has. If it hadn't, we'd be in really big trouble. Instead, we have to look at value. For instance, people come to me and say, hey, I spent $300 on this video card, but video cards are so expensive now, I don't want a new one. Well, let's take a closer look. I'm gonna show you how the value equation has changed. Do you get more for your money at $300, $400, $500 now than you did a few years ago? At the end of this video, I will give you my summary, my conclusion based on all the analysis I've done to tell you exactly how long it takes to double your performance. So you'll have to wait until the end to find that out. But for now, let's jump into the data and my video card rankings for 2021. So this part's gonna be pretty self-explanatory. This table has over 100 video cards listed dating back to 2007. That was the 8800 GT from NVIDIA. And you'll see that I have release dates and prices for some of the early cards, but then I really add those for more of the later cards starting around 2014. I add in all that data for you. And if you're curious about pricing and release dates, you're gonna see more of that in the next chart. But let's focus here on what I've done. I do have the TBG speed class listed and it's all based on that 8800 GT from 2007. Over the past eight years or so, I've been compiling this chart and adding in new video cards as they've been released using the benchmarks that were current at the time of that release. So by doing so, I can actually add new video cards many years later and still have it be pretty valid, pretty comparable. So for example, if we take the classic GeForce GTX 460 released in July 2010 at a price point of $200, you see the two times speed. That means it was actually two times faster than the 8800 GT released about three years previously. So that means you were actually getting almost double the value because the price was pretty similar. You'll see here, $200 versus $250. Now, again, if you're really concerned about price performance, I'm gonna handle that in the next chart, which has a lot more data. But for upgraders, this chart is actually the one that's most interesting because while a GTX 460 and 8800 GT could probably be found in the same benchmark results, you're not gonna find the RTX 3090 in any benchmarks versus the 8800 GT but my speed rating allows you to compare it not only to the 8800 GT, but to every video card that has come since then. Now, I know some of you will probably want to argue that you can't even compare cards from generations that are so far removed because they're not even playing the same games. They don't even have compatibility with the same DX versions. But because I've been building on this data for so long using the current benchmarks at the time of each card's release, I'm still pretty confident that, yeah, the RTX 3090 is, give or take, 28 times faster than the 8800 GT. Now, a couple of caveats about the data. I have skewed it towards the resolutions that were valid at the time, that were really in use, and that people expected to use with the video cards. So for a lot of the earlier video cards, that was going to be 1080p or potentially below that. In more recent years, I've really focused on 1440p. So for example, if you look at the data for the Radeon RX 5700 XT and the RTX 2070, they're about on par at 13 times speed. I was really thinking about those as 1440p cards, not 1080p and not 4K. Likewise, if we jump all the way to the bottom of the chart at 27 times speed, 28 times speed, something like the 6900 XT, versus the GeForce cards, you know, the 6900 XT is actually faster at 1080p than any GeForce card today, but I didn't rank it number one, or I should say 28 times speed or 30 times speed, because 1080p isn't really the resolution that cards made for. 
that's why the 3090 is a little bit faster. I'm really considering 4K performance at that price and performance class. So you AMD fans out there who say, hey, the 6900 XT is actually faster than these GeForce cards. I'm thinking about it really as a 4K performer, all right? It's still really good at 27 times speed, but the 3090 is a little faster. I do have the latest cards in here, the 3070 Ti and 3080 Ti. You can see where I rank those. Some people may actually disagree with those numbers. In fact, the 3070 Ti benchmarks aren't even available as of the date of this publication, but I took an educated guess based on the specs of that card versus the 3070 and the 3080. Now, I think that this is really interesting, particularly for upgraders. So if you say, hey, I wanna know what I need to spend or what kind of card I need to buy to get double the performance of say, the groundbreaking GTX 1080 released in May of 2016. Well, that's ranked 12 times speed, so you actually can get double the performance, but that is actually kind of expensive. So if you want double that, you need 24 times speed, then you're talking like 3080, all right? so. You might say, hey, but I spent $700 in 2016. Why do I have to spend $700 again to double my performance? Yeah, that's about right. So it's been like five years since the release of that card. Yep, you have to spend the same amount to get double your performance. So that helps you put things in perspective. I think a lot of people believe that, hey, I can get a doubling of performance every year or every two years, or I can get a halving of the price for the same performance. It actually takes quite a while for that to happen. And that brings me to my next chart, which will actually show you exactly how long it takes for that to happen. You may have seen something like the video card rankings that I showed you in the previous chart, but you've never seen anything like this. Here I've taken about 100 video cards and plotted them based on the performance that they offered on a dollar per dollar basis and compared it to the 8800 GT, all plotted based on release date. So again, this is not performance, it's performance per dollar. So you're not gonna see 28 times faster on this chart. You're gonna see up to four and a half times more value. And that actually goes to show that the improvements in video cards don't go in leaps and bounds. We're talking about 14 years of video cards here. And what we're seeing is a roughly five times increase in the value you're getting for your dollar. And a lot of people might say, oh, that sounds really terrible. One caveat here is that I have not adjusted for inflation. So over 14 years, that can actually be pretty significant. $250 back in 2007 was actually worth about 320 of today's dollars. But I think that's close enough that it wouldn't really skew the results. It's not like an order of magnitude. It's not even a doubling. So yes, adjusted for inflation, the performance per dollar of today's cards would be about 20% higher, but that doesn't make much of a difference. It might boost the RTX 3060 Ti, which is the current leader to say five times versus four and a half times. But you could see how that wouldn't really change the overall results. Now, I do wanna point out that there's gonna be something controversial here, and that is the prices I've used. I've listed them in the chart. You can see things like RTX 3080 at $700. You might be saying that's $2,000 on eBay. You know what? I needed to ground this in some kind of fact. And so I did use the MSRPs. Now there's an interesting story behind NVIDIA's MSRPs, and that is that they've kind of changed their approach over the past five years. It used to be that Founders Editions cards were released at a higher price than the actual MSRP, and I use those. Nowadays, the Founders Edition, unfortunately, is less expensive than almost any other card you're gonna find on the market, and NVIDIA quickly pulls those Founders Editions from the market. So it's actually, rather than an early adopter's tax, it's an early adopter's subsidy. So you're better off today and the previous couple of years getting a Founders Edition because you're likely to pay less for that card. So it's kind of weird the way that NVIDIA changed its approach to the Founders Edition. At first, it was definitely kind of a premium product, but now it's actually a bonus if you can get that in your hands at launch. So like, again, say the RTX 3080 Ti, which just released this week during Computex is $1,200. And I totally get that that's gonna be a hard price to actually find at the retail market today or any time in the future, because most cards that vendors wanna sell and that manufacturers want to manufacture are gonna be the higher spec versions, maybe a little bit of an overclock. They're gonna add $50 to 
to the price. I have not taken that into account. Again, I had to do something to compare apples to apples. I know a lot of you will be upset about that, but hey, there's no other set price than MSRP. So that's what I've used here. And you know, it does actually beg the question, well, is there such thing as a price that's too low? Obviously there are prices that are too high. You know, there were some video cards released at $3,000, like the Titan Z, that was really stupid, right? Clearly a terrible value, a joke, a laughing stock. And even if we exclude those Halo cards like the Titan Z that really are never gonna set a standard in terms of performance per dollar, we can see that some cards had some trouble along the way particularly when they were trying to follow up on a very successful release. Like NVIDIA's GeForce GTX 1080 Ti released in March 2017 at $700. It was a fantastic high-end value. And both cards that tried to come after it and offer better value didn't succeed. The RTX 2080 Founders Edition at $800 offered lower value. And the Radeon 7 that was released two years after the 1080 Ti barely matched its performance at the same price. It didn't make sense that either of those cards were released. The 1080 Ti was just so good. But are any of these video cards too cheap? I would actually argue the RTX 3080 is a classic example of a GPU that was released at a price that was far too low, really below market value. I think it was because Nvidia knew what AMD had up its sleeve that it had some really competitive new Radeon cards and it priced that RTX 3080 about $200 less than it would have otherwise. So it's $700, which made it really too close in price to the RTX 3070, which was not nearly as fast and definitely made it more difficult for AMD when it released the RX 6800 and 6800 XT priced just $70 apart. There's no way AMD actually wanted to do that. Their hand was forced by Nvidia which set an artificially low price. So even in the light of this great competition, we have prices that are not really market value. AMD and Nvidia are gonna be trying to call each other's bluff, kind of promise a lot, make their competitors scared. And what's the result? The competitor is gonna do whatever they can do. If they're the first mover, they're gonna say, we're gonna price this lower. We don't know what you've got, but we're gonna make it really hard for you to compete because we're willing to lose money on this. And I think the 3080 was a huge money loser, not only for Nvidia, but for its board partners who were forced to sell a card that probably cost more than $700 to manufacture at $700. And that's why you saw very quickly a lot of the overclock cards coming in way higher than $700. Not like 750 or 800, but 850, 900. And that was particularly true with the 3090. I mean, a lot of those overclock cards were $1,800 before the cryptocurrency crisis hit. So that was $300 over MSRP. So again, I think Nvidia was playing a game here with prices, but that's what you get when you have really good competition. Some people scored and got an RTX 3080 for $700. That was an absolute steal, folks. You guys should be patting yourselves on the back if you got one of those. You're never gonna see that again. Now, the good news is if you look at the general curve here over the past 14 years, you do see that value has gone up. That's definitely true. And it's actually most important to think about the mid-range. These days, it's the cards between $400 and $800 where I think you see the most progress. For example, the Radeon R9 290 released in December 2013 at $400 matched the GTX 780 Ti released just a few weeks earlier at $700. That broke the back of Nvidia. Another example is the GTX 1080 released in May 2016 at $700. It offered higher performance than the dual GPU cards released just two years earlier at a much lower price. And I'd say that was the beginning of the end of dual GPU cards altogether. Another example I really like is the RTX 3060 Ti released in December 2020 at $400. It offers higher performance than the 2080 Founders Edition released about two years earlier at double the price. Now I realize not everybody's shopping in the $400 to $800 price range. And one card that I really like from the past few years is the GTX 1660 Super that was released at $230 back in 2019. This card was a fantastic value. It matched the 980 Ti released four years earlier for triple the price. So there are always two ways to look at the progress over time. Either pick a price point and see what kind of performance boost you can get at that price point, or pick a performance level and see how much the price drops over time. And overall, based on the data I've collected over the past decade and a half, 
it looks like you actually have to wait about four to five years to get a doubling in value or performance per dollar, whether that means a price cut by 50% or a performance boost by two times. Now, if you enjoyed this video, definitely give me a like and subscribe. I look forward to your comments. I know a lot of you might find there's something controversial or up for debate about these statistics and the data I've presented. Hey, I welcome that. I think this is something that's worth talking about. So as always, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and I will catch you next time.